Hello, my name is Przemysław Schufel and in this short presentation I'm going to show you how to process special data using Julia. So I will be using Jupyter Notebook and this Jupyter Notebook is available online in the OpenStreetMapX.gl uh, project. You can click here JuliaCon 2020 tutorial and you can find the materials that I'm using. So all you need to do is to Google for OpenStreetMapX.gl and once you Google for it, you find the GitHub project, here's the tutorial. So let me begin. So I'm going to show you how to process the special data in Julia. So the first part is installing and setting everything up. So in the Jupyter, you have all the installation instructions. Now we are going to load the packages. So the second, the first thing I'm doing, I'm loading the packages. Now we will be processing a map file and this is the map file I'm going to use. This is also available for a download. Nevertheless, this is a file that I have ex exported from the OpenStreetMap X, OpenStreetMap project. So you know, this, is, this, is, this is the website of a sample map from OpenStreetMap. And here you can click export. You can select any kind of area. Okay, and you can export a file. And this is an XML file that can be processed with Julia using the OpenStreetMap.x um, library. So once the library is loaded, the first thing we are going to do, we are loading the map data. Now there's an interesting uh, option here, namely trim to connected graph, what it's causing it, uh, since we are just taking a part of the map. So part of um, a part of uh, here, it's Toronto, a part of Toronto area, uh, what it means in, in practice that we might end up having some parts of streets that they have no access. And when we were to run simulation or processing on that, this would be a problem. So this option actually filters selects from the graph loaded into Julia, something that is called the largest connected component. And in this way, we are sure that for each pair of nodes in our graph, a path between those nodes exists. Okay, so this is loaded. So map data is a data structure that contains various information about, um, about the transportation system. The most important piece of information is, uh, is the field named G and this field represents a graph. So this is a graph from the lights graph library and it's a graph representation of this transportation system. Uh, we will see this graph in a minute. The second important thing is the list of nodes. So this is a dictionary that is my mapping node IDs from the graph, from a light graph representation of a transportation network towards node IDs in the OpenStreetMapX project. Actually, sometimes you can see negative values. These values have been artificially introduced by the library. Namely, you can see I have selected a rectangle, a rectangle area here. So some of the roads have been cut in the half. And in this process, this, this last, um, last piece of roads needs to be somehow processed and we have been, the library is adding automatically uh, our virtual nodes. The second important part is a dictionary of nodes that is actually mapping the node information into some geographic coordinates in the real world. Okay, so let's try to do something with this map. So the first thing I'm going to do, I will take 10 cars and let them drive around. So I have 10 cars and they will be driving around the map. So this is a very simple piece of code. So what's happening here, I'm selecting here randomly nodes and then using the library to find the shortest road for each pair of nodes. Now I can plot it. And here for plotting, I'm, I'm using the Python project volume. Uh, it turns out to be very useful for making various plots of maps. And you can, in this tutorial, you can see several examples for code for plotting. So let's have a look how our cars are moving around. 
So actually, this is the map area that I have selected. So this is the map area that I have exported from the OpenStreetMap X project. I have it, uh, represented as a graph, and here you can see ten. Uh, uh, here you can see uh, ten random rows of some cars. Okay, so we have uh, we have um, we have created in this virtual environment some vehicles moving around. Okay, so let us now quickly show how uh, how it can be uh, used uh, to do something uh, to, to do something kind of more complicated so what we are going to do now we are going to do an agent based simulation uh, with agents moving around the city so first i'm defining an agent this will be a pandemic simulation so we we'll assume that there's we have we have some zombie pandemics and we have agents moving around the city uh, so here is a simulation object Okay, so I'm designing a simulation object. I'm initializing the simulation object. The next thing I'm doing, here I have a plot function. Okay, so this is, a, I have a plot function. So let me now show the beginning state of the simulation. So uh, what, uh, what you can see uh, in a few seconds, there will be, uh, there will be a map and uh, what you can see, those white rectangles, these are the agents who are healthy. He is now one infected. And the red, uh, the red uh, lines represent uh, the roads in the, in the graph. And this graph has been already cut, like I told you. The circles, re represent, uh, the circles represent the nodes. And we have agents in this simulation who move around. Okay, so let's see how they move around. So if an, an infected agent meets a, meets a healthy one, then the disease is transmitted. So let's call it some kind of zombie epidemics. So here is the logic behind this. Again, no time to discuss this in detail. And let me run this simulation. So now I'm running the simulation for 10,000. Uh, so now I'm running the simulation for... Uh, a few thousand steps and i'm showing the output so what you can uh, what you can see here on this map is actually that i started with one infected agent and now since the agents are moving around the city a whole group of zombies already is spreading around this area okay so uh, this way uh, we did it now the second thing we can do we can show uh, we can show statistics of the dynamics of uh, um, dynamic of, of such disease. So, and then you have the data. So here the simulation has been run many, many times and it just took a single second. And last but not least, we could also have a look how the number of people infected depends on the number of how the speed of the infection depends on the number of people being on streets and what can do it can see this is a typical results for epidemics stay at home so less people get infected so thank you very much if you have any comments uh, let me know thank you for sending this presentation